And we're off. leaving my home. We're on a bit of a garbage picking adventure. First time in my new diesel van. If you don't already know it, garbage picking is what made me who I am today. Made me most of my wealth. Taught me most of my skills. But times have changed. much good garbage pickings anymore. In our area they give away a $150 coupon if you get rid of your working fridge that's less than 15 years old so you can put it towards a new energy efficient fridge. There's a lot more people who go garbage picking you know five nights a week. Back in the good old days when I used to make a lot of money doing this we had a thing called spring and fall cleanup where we were allowed to throw away anything, a couch, TV, uh, washer, dryer, fridge, stove, air conditioner, lawnmower, dehumidifier, pretty much anything. I even seen chopped up cars in the garbage <laughs> and even once a chopped up aluminum airplane. But they did away with all that like about a dozen years ago. So there's no particular time to go picking except on your garbage day, but there's no particular time when the big good treasures are out there you can make the money. Now in my world around here, most people have central air, so you don't get very many window air conditioners. That used to be where I made most of my money, and that's why my building at the farm is full of them. Now I haven't sold one in three years except for scrap. In the good old days, there was just mad rush. Everybody with their car, their truck, their trailer, their van, there was about 75 of us by so-called professional pickers. Some people would go for antiques and furniture, some for knickknacks, some for baby toys and stuff for their kids, some people for stuff for garage sales and flea markets. Myself, the way I got to make a lot of money at it was so I set a line. I cut it off. I wouldn't pick anything that I couldn't sell unless it was for more than $50. Because I had to store this stuff. The stuff took up a lot of room. And then I had to advertise it. And people weren't going to drive across the city to buy something that was $25 or $30. But if it was $50 and they felt like they were saving $50, they would do it. Everything was expensive back then. A 2000, I mean a 5000 BTU air conditioner, brand new, was $249 on sale. So you're, you were guaranteed a fast sale on a hot day at a 125 bucks a piece. They were like little bricks of gold. 10,000 BTU I could get $250 to $300 a piece for. And a sleeve unit that goes in the hole in the wall in the apartment, I used to be able to sell for $400. It was awesome. I never bothered with hardly picking up any scrap metal because that could just take up room in my vehicle too. That's why I made that turbocharged, intercooled, souped up airy station wagon. Sure, it didn't hold a whole lot compared to a van, but I wanted speed and fuel efficiency and acceleration to be able to get the most area covered in the least amount of time. And in every neighborhood throughout my city of 350,000 people, it was all organized. I had drop-off points. 
I had a customer's house where I had already prearranged that I was allowed to drop off anything there that evening while I was picking or that morning. And the next morning after the garbage truck went by and the neighborhoods were all cleaned out, I would pick up everything on my, with my trailer that I attached to my super wagon. I used to rent farm buildings to do this in. Back then you could sell TVs like hotcakes. Color TVs were a big thing, especially the bigger ones. No problem getting between 100 to 200 bucks for an ordinary TV, even a 20 incher. Easy 200 bucks for a 27 incher with a nice picture. Those days are gone too. Now nobody picks up TVs, they all want the flat screens. When VCRs were still fresh and new in people's minds, microwaves you could get between a hundred dollars to three hundred dollars a piece for a used VCR microwave Since that's unheard of now even when DVD players first came out you could get a good price for them and 20 years ago for a broken I mean for a working CD player 20 to 25 years ago you could get over a hundred bucks those days are all gone too everything is so ultra efficient now that people don't want to buy use stuff that uses more energy and stuff now is stainless steel and all curvy and modern looking. They don't want something with a brown plastic front or another color other than white or stainless steel. You know, nothing green, nothing yellow, nothing almond. The world has slowly changed and I think Walmart did it. Walmart had the biggest effect in bringing material, low price material items, manufactured goods to North America. And that destroyed our working economy here for light manufacturing. It all went overseas, Asian. It killed my business too, so I decided to retire three years ago, and that's when I went on YouTube. Perfect timing. Hardly sell anything anymore. Not even that many repairs anymore. It's a disposable society. I've been already out here driving for 10 or 15 minutes, and I haven't seen a single good thing. Usually in the beginning of spring like it is now, we have warm weather. People are cleaning out their garages and their backyards, their sheds. There's lots of good stuff. Back in the good old days, I thought it was great that 10% of everything that I found worked perfect. Never knew why they threw it away unless they just wanted something new and more modern or a different color. Or it was a little tattered looking. Nowadays, I would say 60 to 80 percent of everything I find works. Really. People are just so sold by marketing that they have to have the new, better looking, more efficient, or something like their neighbors have. But they'll throw something away perfectly good, especially like a big screen TV, just to get a flat screen because it's a little wider. So nowadays I rarely garbage pick, but when I'm out on my drives, just doing whatever, if I see something, I'm certainly going to pick it up. But I guess the easiest thing to sell nowadays, <laughs> after all is said and done, is just dehumidifiers and lawnmowers. Not a hell of a lot else. I used to get a lot of good tires too, and that's how I uh, never had to buy a tire in my life for my cars. People would sell the car they had, or they would get in an accident, and they had a spare set of tires for it in their garage. So instead of advertising to sell them, they would just throw them away. Oh my god, I got some nice tires sometimes, even on aluminum rims from expensive cars. Who knows what happened to their car? Of course, there's uh, lots of good garbage picking stories I've heard about how much people made from one garbage because what a great find they had. I passed up on the chopped up airplane. I heard the guy got $1,700 for all the scrap aluminum who picked it up, but it was I couldn't fit it all in my little station wagon. The most I ever made from picking a garbage was $900. I found two working air conditioners, really big buggers, like 30,000 BTUs, and the only thing wrong was someone snipped off the cords and put a 110 volt plug on them because they used to have a 220 volt plug. It looks, there was an auction sticker on them. It looks like they had bought them at an auction and didn't know that they were 220 volts and when they wouldn't work on 110, 
they threw them away, so I sold a pair of them for $900. That was, was about 15, 16 years ago. <laughs> Not bad for one time. There's some actors if you need it. Sometimes you'd even see strange things like a, a dead dog in a garbage bag. You had to battle off skunks and raccoons regularly. You had to battle off violent other garbage pickers. Yeah, people would, oh man, people would throw things at your car, they would try to cut, they would pull up and cut you off. It'd be like a fight, who got there first, who seen it first. There was big money to be made. There was competition. I also had a team of anywhere from three to five people sort of working for me as freelance pickers. I paid them by the piece. Five to ten bucks for a broken lawnmower that they found. Ten bucks to twenty bucks for an air conditioner. Ten bucks to twenty bucks for a certain appliance. Stuff like that. They knew where my drop-off points were and they would put the stuff there too. Put their name on it and I knew who to pay the next day. Well, I had 25 years of wonderful time doing this. I enjoyed every minute of it. It was like having Christmas every day. You never knew what you were going to get. It was always an adventure. You'd meet, you'd meet a lot of people. And I learned a lot of things. Every time I find out some sort of item that's really saleable and valuable, well then I would teach myself how to fix that too. So it ended up I could fix everything I found in the garbage, whether it be electronic, refrigeration, mechanical, or gasoline power. And that's why I am the way I am today. Now that I'm retired, mostly from working, now my big job is YouTube, over 40 hours a week. I'm just slowly getting rid of all that stuff I have still. It's not selling anymore. Scrap metal. I don't need my fast Aries anymore. I drive my ultra-efficient minivan. I don't have to compete against 75 people all rushing around at the same time. It is kind of relaxing doing this. in my home, the furniture at my farm, the furniture and lawn stuff at my beach at the farm, uh, so much tools and equipment I have. It all came from garbage picking. I don't know what to do with my money because I get everything for free. I'm not the type of person who has to have something that's brand new. Second best is good enough for me. It's the saying is so right. One man's trash is another man's treasure. If you touch it, it turns to coal. Well, at least if you fix it. Well, nothing good out. A waste of time. I wouldn't even bother if this was my gas van. I'd be too cheap. this last street. This is a street I grew up on since 1978. From 78 to 85 I lived on this street. With my parents of course. Absolutely wonderfully for the last week and a half I've had it on the road. Well, there's our house, the one with the red car. That's where I grew up and my bedroom was in the basement. That's the house I lived at just after my go-kart got done being built. 
it's only a kilometer from where I live now. This subdivision is called Northridge, in North London, Ontario. Oh well. Another day and no dollar. Head back and have a beer. We'll do more emails. That sucks. Homework every morning, every night. All for YouTubers. Well, now we're back home. That was an adventure with no reward. Oh well. The good old days. Now to give you a fuel efficiency update that's real and true and you won't believe it. leave it running to prove it. Still running? Look at that gas gauge. Still above the full mark. Can you read the kilometers? 478.9 uncorrected kilometers. Remember this thing is actually, it's really actually 38% too fast what it shows. So it's 38% too high of mileage it shows. But that works out to a little over 300 kilometers, which works out to a little over 200 miles. And the gas gauge hasn't moved yet. And that's for real. No wonder I'm so cheap. <laughs> Anybody would drive a vehicle like this, especially a van. Right, kitties?